So what is up with pancreatitis in dogs? What are the symptoms, the causes, the treatments? I'm gonna answer that and much more for you. I am Dr. Ruth Roberts, your pet's ally. If you like this video and the information I'm giving you, please hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, like the video. Let us know in comments that this is useful to you and I'll keep producing more videos. And also please feel free to suggest topics so we can answer more questions for you. So like I was saying, uh, what what is up with it? It's like every time you your dog gets sick and is vomiting and has diarrhea, it has pancreatitis anymore. And so let's walk through this a little bit. So what can trigger pancreatitis in dogs? Well, first of all, there's two forms that we really don't talk about very much in veterinary medicine. One is the acute form where there's vomiting, there's diarrhea, there's a lot of abdominal pain, your dog feels horrible and it's in the hospital getting fluids and it's just really, really bad. There can be milder versions of these acute attacks. And in this situation, often it is because your dog has eaten something super fatty. So when I finished veterinary school, we used to call this garbage can disease or Monday morning disease. Everybody would barbecue a big, fat, nice, juicy steak on the weekend, throw the fat in the garbage and the bone, and the dog would get into the garbage, eat the fat and the bone, and then boom, Sunday night they're throwing up, Monday they're at the hospital because the vomiting is just going on. That's one form, and that's certainly the way most people will think about it. There is also something called the chronic form of pancreatitis. Now, this can happen when your pet has had multiple episodes of pancreatitis because it has, and I'll get back to that in a second too. And you, it eats any extra fat and boom, it's got vomiting, it's got diarrhea. It's something you've figured out how to control, so maybe you don't need to go to the vet. But more often what I'm seeing this in is dogs that work for a living and in specific guide dogs for the blind, uh, other assistance dogs, things of this nature, or dogs that are just super anxious. And what I was seeing is they just uh, they had tummy upset. And so they were in what they call that prayer position or downward dog a lot. They didn't necessarily ever vomit. They didn't necessarily ever have diarrhea, although the symptoms could elevate and that could happen, but that was pretty infrequent. Really more of what they had was chronic abdominal pain. And that's pretty miserable. So what are, how can I treat my dog's pancreatitis at home? And here is the deal, is that pancreatitis in dogs and treatment at home in the acute phase often doesn't go very well. Certainly, first of all, you want to withhold food uh, because the more they eat, the more they vomit. Similarly, don't leave a giant bowl of water down because if your dog has an upset tummy, they're dehydrated, they suck a ton of water down, they vomit it right back up. And uh, you can offer small amounts of ice chips through the days, through the day to help relieve some of that dehydration. But honestly, if your dog has been vomiting every two hours or having diarrhea every two hours, you really need to go to the vet. Now, once you get to the vet, those, the treatment is really pretty nonspecific, and it depends on the severity of disease that your dog has been experiencing. So certainly one thing is going to be to use a medication to help stop the vomiting and help relieve the abdominal pain. The second is going to be to give fluids to help rehydrate your pet, whether that's subcutaneously or under the skin or intravenously, um, because your pet is really sick and needs to be in the hospital. But at home, these, these treatments get really risky. But if your pet has had multiple episodes of GI upset, and let's call it that for a minute, and I'll explain in a minute why, um, you can talk to your vet about having a sort of at-home treatment kit available with something like Serenia to help control the nausea and vomiting, um, maybe an acid reducer like Pepsid or Endansetron, and then some sub fluids. Because if you can get the vomiting stopped and stop feeding your pet, stop taking up the water, then a lot of times you can arrest the symptoms and your dog can recover naturally. Some other things that you could use once the vomiting is under control would be things like slippery elm and other demulcents that will help kind of soothe the gut a bit. And then certainly if you are using uh, essential oils, there's a product called Digize from 
from Young Living. And there's probably other formulas that are similar to that, but I found that to be super effective for controlling sort of minor symptoms, if you will. Now, I keep referring to the fact that um, that tests for pancreatitis are not all that they are cracked up to be. And it is the truth. So let me pop this up here for you. But this is, you know, so here it is two different ways. So BCA is a very large chain of veterinary hospitals in the United States. And uh, what they're saying is that the CPLI test has approximately 85% of dogs very specific for that issue. Well, that's 15% of dogs that it doesn't do anything for. And then if we look at the sort of a, a site from Australia in Queensland, they're saying it the way it really is. There is no test that can diagnose pancreatitis with 100% specificity, specificity, and it's therefore easily misdiagnosed. And so this is what I'm saying to you. You go to the vet, your dog's vomiting, they give it a CPLI test, Oh, yeah, your dog has pancreatitis. Well, no, maybe it just has gastroenteritis because this is the issue too, is that the symptoms of pancreatitis are really similar to gastroenteritis. The thing that seems to be a little bit different is that there is a lot more pain typically in the area of the pancreas, but not always. And then, you know, the other thing is, is that here it is again, you know, the most common clinical signs include nausea, vomiting, fever, fever, lethargy, abdominal pain, diarrhea, and decreased appetite. But the thing, this is the differentiation, differentiating thing to me, the prayer position or the downward dog. That means there's really significant abdominal pain that can go with pancreatitis. That can also go with obstruction of the GI tract. So this is the problem, is that we've sort of been conditioned to say any vomiting and diarrhea is pancreatitis, when in fact it's not. Now, can a dog recover from pancreatitis? Absolutely, yes. It will need to eat less fat than before. How much? I don't know. This is the problem, is that we know it needs to eat less fat, and maybe it needs to eat a better quality of fat. So if you think about it, most pet foods are produced from uh, commercially produced animals and their fat is very high in pro-inflammatory molecules. So maybe a cleaner uh, vegetable oil like avocado oil, sunflower seed oil that's processed properly, things of that nature, and a home-cooked diet would be a better bet. The other thing is, is that your dog's hands certainly recover from the pancreatitis. If that has not happened in the uh, week or so after it got diagnosed, maybe there's something else going on. And maybe you need some additional studies like x-rays, ultrasound, et cetera, et cetera. Back to what I said earlier about uh, pancreatitis being misdiagnosed, you can have a dog that has a perfectly normal looking pancreas on ultrasound, but that dog has pancreatitis and the converse is true as well. You can have a very inflamed, uh, ugly, edematous looking pancreas on ultrasound and the dog doesn't have uh, pancreatitis. So you really have to be um, careful about this. So what are the warning signs of pancreatitis? If you have seen this in your pet before, you know them. Oh, I don't feel so good. I'm not going to eat. Oh, oh, I ate a little bit and boom, it comes right back up. Uh, and then it can progress on and on and on. And again, for dogs with chronic pancreatitis, uh, so chronic pancreatitis and dog symptoms may be very different as far as, oh, I just don't feel good. My tummy hurts. I'm licking my lips. I have you know, gas bubbles in my tummy that you can hear. Those may be the more common symptoms. And for those dogs, often their episodes are triggered by stress and emotional issues within the house. And if they've been working at a particular job for a long time, the stress of it may become too much. So that's where you've got a whole host of other things to work on as far as reducing that symptomatology. So the other question I get commonly is what can I feed my dog who has pancreatitis? So the, you know, if, if according to conventional veterinary medicine for 
pancreatitis in dogs, the diet is always the highly processed bag of low fat prescription food. And I'm here to tell you that's not a great idea either, because again, mostly that food is very, very pro-inflammatory. So you want to feed an extremely easy to digest food and very anti-inflammatory. So for this reason, and for many dogs that are recovering from gastrointestinal illness in general, starting with a congee or almost a porridge, we'll let that go by. So Hio will stop barking. You are just full of yourself. So for many of these dogs, feeding a a congee or a porridge where you would take a cup of rice and instead of adding two cups of water to cook it, add four cups. That's a great place to start. The rice water can actually help to absorb some of the liquid from the intestine if your dog's been experiencing diarrhea. And then you want to basically anything else you're adding in may really, really overcook it. And the reason for this is that you were breaking it down so that the food is already pre-digested. Remember, the pancreas is the organ associated with producing many of our digestive enzymes. So if it is irritated, this is just not a good idea to throw a bunch of raw meat down in there and then demand that the pancreas produce these enzymes and potentially exacerbate more inflammation and pain in the pancreas. So that's super helpful. Use things that are going to help control inflammation as well. So things like high doses of omega-3 fatty acids and then things like turmeric if your dog can eat that. But again, take it slowly and gently. And intermittent fasting is not a bad way to start. So if your dog just spent the last three or four days vomiting, Feeding it five times a day is not a good plan. Its tummy's just not ready for that. And so you might start literally with a quarter of what your dog may eat normally, volume-wise, in a kanji, in a really easily digested soup, and gradually build up over two or three days from there. Because the last thing we want to do is make that vomiting and that symptomatology worse. So if this has been helpful for you, please hit the subscribe button for the channel, hit the bell, ring, hit the like button, and let us know in the comments how we're doing, how we can help you. We'll get back to you with uh, some uh, resources and things of that nature. We'll also post a sister blog in the, in the uh, description of the video so that you can read more about pancreatitis and dogs in depth. I'm Dr. Ruth Roberts, your pet's ally.